Isaiah chapter 55. 55th, the 55th book of the Bible, 2 Timothy. Oh, everyone. 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 That thirsty. Come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come in by. Wait a minute. Come by with no money? That's not an American plan there. That is a capitalistic plan. I know a preacher, you know, you don't work, you don't work, you don't work. And eat. Yay, come. Buy with no money. Wine and milk without money and without price. You look at that verse and it's like, <laughs> come and buy, but it has no price. You have no money. Jesus said he's the water of life and salvation is free. Milk is a type of the word of God. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? Cars, houses, tickets, toys, I mean all kinds of material things. What does the church spend their money on that's not bread? Carpets. Someone come in and keep the lawns nice and green. What's that do? What does your lawns green do for heaven? Well, people will like our property and they'll come. That doesn't bring salvation when the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, we're going to buy nice, comfortable pews. So a lost man will be comfortable? Well, he's going to get saved. It's amazing what Christians will spend their money on, including me. That's not bread. And how much extra should we spend money that is ill to our health? Me with diabetes. I ain't preaching to the crowd. I'm preaching to myself. There are things that I buy with diabetes I shouldn't be buying. And your labor for that which satisfy not. <clears throat> go off to work you go, off to work you go to pay for the house that you know you really don't like no more that now you got a you got a camper and RV. You got a camper and RV and then now you got a boat. To get away from the house and get away from the RV. And now you got a men's club, men's society, eagles, vets, whatever kind of, to keep away from the wife you married and the kids that you produced. And the thing is, we're not content. If we were truly content, we would not need the extra. We just settle down, Jesus said, for, for food, raiment. But that's, that's not the living of America. You know, Americans bashed the, you know, the third, America is, is not like the third world nations. And yet they can survive on what little they got. And what American has, and a person of third world nation could survive for, for as long as they live on the earth. Hearken diligently unto me, Isaiah, speaking for God, that ye, that, hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. All right, Stiley, how's your diet? Anything bad that you're eating? Then you ought not to be doing it. Too much sugar? 
You ought to quit it. Too much salt? You don't need it. Not healthy? There you go. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. I ain't, you know, weight gain. That's the riches and, and, and this, the, the, the great blessings and mercy that God gives the man. Incline your ear. Listen up. And come to me, God. Hear, listen. And your soul shall live. What shall you hear? What about the church age? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That will satisfy you. That will give you love, joy, peace, long-suffering. It may not give you the best of health. It may not pay your bills. It may lead a life of trouble and anguish and trouble. But God will take care of his children. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David, that is Jewish. Don't you dare as a Gentile, don't you dare as a Christian, oh, I, I can claim that. Because there are places in Isaiah 55 the church runs to. Now I know it says everyone. John chapter 4, John chapter 7, Revelation 21 and 22. Okay? That's addressed to everyone. Sure mercies of David, as a Gentile, and as a church, stay away from that. That's Jewish. See, not all scripture is given for the Gentiles. Not all scripture is given to the Jews. Not all scripture is given to the church. Not all scripture is given to the world. You got to rightly divide. You got to study. Behold, I have given him, David, for a witness to the people, and this would also come to Jesus Christ. Jesus would say quite often, My witness is of the Father, my witness is not of this world. Jesus testified to be that witness to the people, Jews. A leader and commander to the people. Nowhere does the Bible say Jesus is the commander of the church. That commander is a title given to Joshua. That title was given to Moses. That, that title was given to King David. It's given to King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The kings were called the captains. Behold, thou, the Jews, shall call a nation that thou knowest not, Gentile. The nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee. There are nations that don't know Israel, they run unto Israel because of the Lord thy God. For the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. What's that? There's a group of people that come out of the tribulation period, the second advent. And Jesus says to them, because you took care of me, you took care, you, you visited me in prison, because you, you, you clothed me, you, you gave me medicine, you comforted me. And they're like, when do we do that to you? Unto my brethren, the Jews. There are people who are going to come out of, the, out of the tribulation period. They're going to stand as sheep nation. They're going to go into the millennium. And they didn't even know what they were doing. How's that for salvation? A salvation not to go into the into hell after the second advent, but go into the millennium for a thousand years. And then they're going to run up to the Jews that they helped. They say, hey, Jesus is with you. You are God's people. 
you're going to Jerusalem. You're going for the three times of the year that the feast because the law is happening. Man, come on, let's all go together. Show us the way. The light on the hill, the salt of the earth. That's a Jewish nation. That ain't the church. You get Christians who, who love the word, try to, they become salt in a Christian. Oh, I hate that. You got Christians for other Christians. You know, let me tell you, what you're doing is wrong. That's a big bright light. Ah, get out of here. Those very Christians are the ones that say, well, I let my light shine. When I try to show you the light of the Bible, ah, I don't want to see it. And you're a cockroach for Jesus. You're a cockroach. When the lights get turned on, ah, run, run. I got a message called Cockroach for John chapter 3. So here's a group of nations that they don't even know because it's future. And I'm not going to call the name, but let, let's just say for in, in Isaiah's time, do they know Germans? Do they know English? Do they know Russians? Do they know Americans? Do they know Mexicans? Do they know Indians as far as the nation of India? Do they know Chinese? Do they know Japanese? Do they know these nations that may help them in the tribulation period? Now, I don't know what nations are going to do right. Now these nations that Israel's never heard of before, now they're running to the Jews. Let's go to Jesus. And those Jews are going to say, let's go to the Messiah. You know, we're supposed to bring offerings. The law says bring offerings. Law says bring offerings. Law says bring tithes and offerings. Let's bring it. See how the church gets messed up? Malachi's not for today. I had a pastor tell you, you know, tribulation period is not the law. Well, okay, if that's not the law, why do you put us on the law and preach and tithe and offerings out of Malachi? That's the law. You got the law all messed up. How can you say that? I pray that your your, your flight be not on the Sabbath. The abomination of desolation, which will be in the holy place. You mean the temple? You mean where they're bringing offerings? How come the pastors run to Malachi under the law? You know? Seek ye the Lord. Look for him. You can have application to the Christian in the church age. But doctrinally, there's no church. It's Isaiah saying to the Jews who are rebellion or apostate, will you come to Jehovah? Will you get right and come to God? I'm going to show you what's going to happen in the future. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Where's God going? Babylon's coming in Jeremiah. Rome is coming in 33 AD. The Antichrist is coming, oh boy. Adolf Hitler came in World War II. And God's is going to step back. You want it your way? Go for it. We have no king but Caesar? Go for it. Adolf Hitler operated under the Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church. Call ye upon him, God, while he is near. Because he's going to step back. He's going to let Babylon... He's going to let Rome, he's going to let the Antichrist do a, do a beating. Let the wicked forsake his way. Now, now you can, that's today. That message is absolutely today. Isaiah is speaking to a bunch of Jews living wickedly. The unrighteous man, his thoughts. Your thoughts are sins. What you are thinking and what you have thought and what you will think going to stand before God in judgment. Let him return unto the Lord. That's a repent. And you can preach that today. Come on to Jesus and be saved. He will have mercy upon him. And our God 
for he will abundantly pardon. The only way you can get a pardon is a guilty. And you can apply that passage today. That wicked man will come to Jesus and, and, and confess to Jesus that he is a sinner. He is guilty. Guilty. God will forgive him. God will show him mercy. And God will pardon him. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Why does God allow it to happen? I just don't understand. Listen, I do. There are things right now in my life where I am today, and I, I question God. There have been events in my life, and there are events in life that I look at God, and I, I, I'm mature enough to say, really? And I get off to God and say, God, is anything too hard for thee? And, you know, I've been saved for 34 years. I understand Paul saying, I'd rather be with the Lord. I'd rather be absent from this body and present with the Lord. But it's needful for me to be here or be with you. And I've had Christians, well, they ought not to say that. Get your heart and your life and your thoughts out of the world and see what the world really has to offer you. And what sin and what man. It don't care. Neither are your ways my way. Well, what are the ways of man? Religion, science, and evolution. Everybody goes to heaven. We're all good. That's not the way of God. Jesus said, I am the way. All other ways are heresies. And my thoughts, then your thoughts. Why God allows things to happen to people? I got the perfect answer. I don't know. Why do people die? Sin. You rebelled against God. I don't know if it's God. I don't know if it's the devil. And I don't know it's your fault. For as the rain cometh down, simple, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither. Now we know we got evaporation, that evaporation. I can't say that word. And it's not when it rains it goes back up. It's not when it snows it goes. It goes through a vapor. But waters the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud. Water brings crops. It may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now, if you don't recognize that as a parable, and run back to verses 1 and 2, that's the parable that Jesus said. There was a sower that went out and he sold the word of God. And there's another place in the Bible that says, Cast thy bread upon many waters. Now, we don't eat the people that get saved, but the parable's there. You can't take a type 100%. So shall my word, God's word, be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Now, there are people that use that, you know, so winning a witness. As the word of God goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper the thing here 
whither to I send it. So as the rain and snow comes down and gives us crops, that's the purpose of rain and snow. But well, out of God's mouth is the word. And God sends forth his word. And to what purpose God sent forth his word, it's going to come back fruitful. Now, I know this verse is used in so many and all that, but you try to tell me, you go to somebody and say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in it should not perish, but have everlasting life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. All you got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That's all the Word of God. That man rejects the Word of God, and that man goes to hell. Are you telling me that's what that's what God planned? That's what the prospering of God is? God's not willing that any should perish. I'll tell you what that verse means. A virgin shall conceive and bear a, bear a son. That is the word of God. It happened. He was numbered with the transgressor. He made his rich. He made his grave with the rich. That's the word of God. It happened. Everything that God said, prophecy, is going to happen and it's not going to come back void. Whatever prophecy, first advent, second advent, millennium, and the, in the eternal life, whatever God said, it's going to happen. It may not happen now. The rapture is going to happen. God said it. It hasn't happened. Don't you count it void. And there's a lot of Christians, there's a lot of people, even Paul's time, Paul or Peter, that people are saying, you know, the resurrection had passed. You know, the rapture's already happened. They were making the word of God none effect. They were making God's word void. Well, the rapture, you know, the rapture's not going to happen. Yes, it is. Yes, it will. And when the rapture does happen, whether I'm dead or alive, when the rapture happens, everything about the rapture fulfilled what God said. You can't apply that verse to soul winning because if, if it was to God's purpose and God's prospering of his word that came out of his mouth, then everybody would be saved. Not willing that any should perish. But you give them the gospel. You give them the word of God. The very word of God. And they reject it. And they die and go to hell. That's not what God wanted. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. When we get to glory, when we get to New Jerusalem, guess what's going to be there? The word of God. God said, if you believe in my son, you're saved, you're my son, you've been adopted into the family. If you put your, your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ, you'll be forgiven, forgotten, and you'll go to heaven. When I die, or rapture, when I get to heaven, when I see Jesus, God's word is not void. Even though it hasn't happened yet, right now. And there are people, there are religions, and there are Christians that have taken the word of God and say, well, it hasn't happened it's, I'm done. You have made the word God void. And when you have changed the Bible, you have corrected the Bible, you have not darkly, uh, rightly divided the word of God, you make the word of God void. Well, God's all finished with Israel. No, he's not. That makes the word of God void by your teachings. Well, if you go to a human sinner called a priest and confess your sin, no, God did not say that. You have made the word of God void. God didn't say that. If you say something that God did not say, or you misinterpret what God said, Or you deceive by what God says, a false prophet, 
then you make the God word of God of none effect. You make it void, and you are in error. I'll give you one great example. Who told the people on in the church age to build the ark? I think it's Tennessee. I don't care. Where did they get the notion to build an ark? Well, Genesis says it. Uh, Genesis said it to Noah, not to the Christian. That building of that ark, wherever it's stated, that's void. That doesn't do nothing. Who cares? Right now, the ark is on Ararat, and God says, I don't want you to see it. I don't want you to have it. I've told the Turkish government, close it off. So some American, oh, we'll build one here. Book, chapter, and verse of the church age epistles. Please. Okay? That's what that verse means. What God said, it will come back. And it will be non-void. It will be fulfilled. Scripture and prophecy. For ye shall go out with joy. And this is millennium 12 and 13. For ye shall go out with joy. You see that joy associated with the millennium. And led forth with peace. Peace and joy. Joy and peace. Millennial. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you in singing. Now, are you going to take that literal? I don't know. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be interesting when we get in the millennium that the mountains do sink? And there's an expression coming up. It's found often in the Bible. We'll read on. And all the trees of field shall clap their hands. You know, that's off. That is written most a, a lot in the Bible. Would it not be interesting you go up there and they clap their hands? You say, impossible. Well, how come in the movie Wizard of Oz... Dorothy and her three friends are on the yellow brick road. They come to a bunch of apple trees. And the apple trees get offended that they're taking the apple. And the apple trees take their hands and take the apples and throw it at Dorothy and her friends. How come the trees in, in the Wizard of Oz can have hands, but in God's Bible we can't? How come magic in the realm of New Age can have unicorns? And yet the Bible can't have unicorns. Now, are you saying, Stiley, that it is literal? I'm saying I don't know, but it would be interesting. It would be very interesting. You know, the mountains can sing if God puts that certain breeze through them. And the wind. Now, watch this in verse 13. Watch the curse removed off the earth. And this is only in a millennium. Instead of a thorn, Genesis 3. Shall hasn't happened yet. Future. Come in, come up the fir tree. You know, in a garden, you're more likely to get weeds in the plants that you planted. Ask me, I know that for one hundred percent. Instead of a briar, Genesis three, shall come up a myrtle tree. There are no weeds. The curse has been removed in the earth in the millennium. And whatever you put in that ground, it's going to come up. No weeds in the millennium. That was a part of the curse. It shall be to the Lord for a name, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, for an everlasting, uh-oh, sign. And Jews require a sign. The whole entire millennium is to tell that Jew that that's the Messiah. And that Jew, with their Messiah, and their temple worship and everything with the curse is removed and everything proper. They're to go to the Gentile nations and say, come. Now we are under a curse today. 
And it's reversed because the Gentiles are telling the Jew, come. For everlasting sign that should not be cut off. You know what that cut off is? You know where you find that in the Bible? You find that in the law. When a man has disrespected and challenged and rebelled against the law, that man shall be cut off from his people. And that man shall be cut off from his people. And that man shall be cut off from his people. That is a Jewish expression. Not church age. So there'll be Gentiles in the millennium being led by the Jews who are living in a uncursed world with Jesus Christ as the king and everything is going to be wonderful and great. And there'll be leaders of cities in the millennium who are Christians who earned the right to reign. And those Christians that got gold, silver, and precious stone are going to be wearing crowns. And we're going to be kings. But the king of kings is Jesus Christ. 